In the last lesson we did some optimizations and added eager loading to get rid of the M plus 1 problem. Today let's continue with our optimizations and fix the flush method calls for every persist because it seems to be running every insert statement within its own database transaction. For example, if we try to import the transactions here, I'm going to import 1000 transactions and let's open the clockwork here. Let's do import. And after waiting for some time, we see that the transactions are imported and the import took over 43 seconds. If we inspect this, we see that it's running every insert within the database transaction and the flush method call is the bottleneck here. To fix this, we should try and group these insert statements and invoke flush only a few times. So maybe like persist 250 transactions, invoke flush, then do another 250 transactions, invoke flush, and so on. Now before we implement the solution, I want to mention that there was a bug that slipped in the last lesson that I forgot to mention. I forgot to add this string to lower function call in here to find the correct category, so it resulted in transactions being imported without categories. The fix is simple, we just need to add this string to lower function call to this category name. Because when we get all the categories from the category service, we are doing string to lower on the keys here. And to properly compare them and find them, we need to do the same here as well. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's try to fix our flush problem. Since we'll be doing inserts in batches, we need uh, some sort of counter to count how many transactions have been persisted so far. So before the loop, let's add count equals one and then increment it after the create method. So we'll do count plus plus in here. We also need a batch size. So how many rows are we going to process at the same time? So let's put the batch size at 250 for now. And we can adjust it later on if it's too much or too little. You don't want to put too big number here because the bigger the number here means more work flush method has to do and it can actually cause memory issues. Now in here, before incrementing, we need to check if the number of transactions imported so far is a multiple of this batch size. And by multiple, I mean a number of transactions that can be evenly divided by this number without a remainder. We can use a modulo operator to do that because modulo operator returns the remainder of a division operation. So we can do something like if count modulo operator batch size equals to zero, meaning there is no reminder, then we can do the flush method call. All right, so before we do that, let's actually get rid of the flush method call from within the create method. So within the create method, we call this update method and the update method does the persist and flush. So let's get rid of this from here. And this means that we actually need to make adjustments to other parts of the code that use these same methods. For now, let's get the importer working and then we'll fix the rest after. Now let's go back to the controller and we need to call the flush method from here. I think our controller actually is becoming a little bit bloated, so I don't want to do all of these things within the controller. Why don't we instead extract all of this into a service class that handles our imports? Maybe something like transaction import service. So let's take all of this code and we're going to inject some uh, read-only transaction import service class and let's create this class. We'll create this within the services namespace and let's create a new method called import from file and this method will need to either accept a file path or a resource. For now let's accept a, a file path so we'll do string file and we also need to accept the user entity because we need to associate the transactions with the user so we'll do user user and it will return nothing so we'll set the return type to void and let's paste in the code in here and we'll actually take this thing away from here because the file is now the file path and let's call this method from within the controller so we'll do this transaction import service import from file and pass the path this way as well as the user instance. Let's get rid of these two from here because we no longer need them. Let's remove these things. 
and let's go back to the import from file method and now we can call the flush method here from the entity manager so we'll need to inject the entity manager in here and do flush method call this way we also need to add the flush method call after the loop for any remaining records so let's copy this code and paste it here as well now we don't want to call the flash method uh, just like that we want to call it only if there are any remainders because uh, let's say if the file only contained 250 rows then this would take care of calling the flash method and this would be redundant to call now there are multiple ways we can do that the way I'm going to do it is that we're going to reset the counter every time we flash here so we'll do count equals to one and otherwise will increment the count so what's going to happen here is that every time we create a transaction we're going to increment the count then if we reach the number 250 we call the flush method and we reset the count back to one then in here we're going to do if count is greater than one only then call the flush method all right, so let's test this out now. Let's open the browser, let's clean this up, and let's import the same 1000 transactions. Before it took over 43 seconds, and let's do the import, and we see that now it takes under one second. If we inspect this, we see the database transactions run for every 250 insert statements. So if we keep scrolling here, somewhere on the bottom, we're going to see another database transaction. So let's keep scrolling, and we see the commit, and then it starts a new database transaction so this is where the flush method is called after 250 transactions have been persisted so that's what increases the performance because we're not calling flush method for every single persist there is still one issue here though and is related to a memory leak which is also hard to track now this may not be a problem for small applications and you may not even notice it but I'm going to show you how you can track this down in case you encounter memory issues on a larger or medium applications. Let's inject a clockwork instance within the constructor so that we can log some things. Then we're going to log the memory usage before the loop and after the loop. So before the loop we're going to do this clockwork log log level debug and then we'll add the message memory usage before and we'll do memory get usage and then we'll copy this and paste it after the loop and change this to after let's also log the unit of work size before and after the loop as well so we're going to duplicate this and we'll do unit of work before and we can get this from the entity manager so we'll do this entity manager get unit of work size let's copy this paste it here as well and we'll change this to after if you need a refresher on what unit of work is refer back to the doctrine lessons in third section it basically is a central object that tracks entity changes and manages uh, the persistence the bigger the unit of work the more memory is used so let's go back to the browser let's do the import now it again takes less than one second let's inspect the logs and as you can see the memory usage went up quite a bit now some of it may be due to the fact that we have query logging enabled because of the clockwork so doctrine is probably using up the memory for that in production there would not be a problem because we wouldn't be running clockwork there so let's disable the query logging for now to get the clear picture Let's go back to the code. Let's open container bindings. Let's scroll down and we'll comment out the doctrine data source in here. Let's go back to the browser. Let's do another import. Let's inspect and we see that the memory usage dropped a little bit, but it's still a lot more than before. Also notice the unit of work usage here. It says before it was 62 and after the loop it's 1062. So it seems like the size of unit of work increased by 1000 and that relates to us importing a file with 1000 transactions in it. So as you can imagine this can grow quite a bit if we import uh, larger files maybe it's something that contains 10,000 transactions or 100,000. So we can see that we do have a memory problem. We are not clearing out the memory and the unit of work size is not decreasing either. So while this may be okay for 1000 records, it may not be okay for larger files. So let me explain what is happening here. 
When we persist an entity, the entity is added to the unit of work. The unit of work is responsible for tracking changes to entities and synchronizing those changes with the database when we call the flush method. When we call the flush, the entity manager runs the queries, but it still keeps the reference to the managed entities in memory, which causes this sort of leak. To free up the memory, we need to call the clear method on the entity manager after calling flush. The clear method detaches all the managed entities from the entity manager's persistence context and clears the entity manager's internal state. So let's go back to the code and go back to the service here and we'll do clear and we'll also call clear right here. Now calling clear is not always needed and it may have some side effects. It depends on how many entities are being persisted and the size of unit work as well as the available memory. So I would say avoid premature optimizations and use profilers and logs to determine if optimizations are really needed. In this case, it makes sense to call it to free up some of the memory because we may be importing large files. Let's test this out. So let's go back to the browser. Let's import 1000 transactions again. And seems like we're getting an error. It's a 500 error. Let's open the error log file. And we see the error message stating that multiple non-persisted new entities were found through the given association graph. Now let's read through some of these relationship messages. We see that a new entity was found through the relationship transaction user that was not configured to cascade persist operations for entity user. To solve this issue, either explicitly call entity manager persist on this unknown entity or configure cascade persist disassociation in the mapping, for example, many to one. So what is happening is that the clear method detaches all the entities. Then the transaction entity is persisted, but the user and the category entities have also been detached by the clear method and therefore they need to be persisted again for this to work. That's basically what that error message is saying. The solutions suggested by the error message could work, but I don't want to do them. I don't want to add the cascade option to the entity and I also don't want to persist them manually again. The reason I don't want to add the cascade option to the entity is because I don't want that cascade to be enabled for every operation that we're going to do that deals with that entity. Instead, I want to just make this importer work without applying the cascade globally to that entity. So what we can do instead is that we can just clear the transactions from the identity map instead of clearing everything. This clear method actually accepts an argument here and we can specify the entity that we want to clear from the identity map. Since we're persisting bunch of transactions and then we're doing the flush, we can clear just the transaction entity and that should help with the memory management as well. So we'll do clear transaction entity and I'm not going to do the same for the second clear method call in here because at this point we should be safe to clear everything out. So let's try the import now. Let's go back to the browser, click import and we're still getting 500 error seems like. So let's open the error logs again. Let's scroll down to see the new error and the new error has the similar error message. It says multiple non-persisted new entities were found through the given association graph and that's the same error as before. However, if you pay attention to the individual error messages in here, it states that a new entity was found through the relationship category transactions. And in here it was saying transaction user and transaction category. Oh, it's probably because we are adding the transaction to the category within the category entity. If we open the category entity, we have this inverse relationship here. So if we go here where we add the transaction, we see that within the category, we are adding the transaction to the transactions array. And we may not want to do that in some cases. This is uh, called within the set category on the transaction entity. So we may not want to do this from here. Essentially what's happening is that it's going to keep all the transactions of the category in the identity map and that can increase memory usage as well. So it is important to pay attention to these inverse relationships and you may not need to do that for every single case. If we set the category on the transaction this way, we may not be accessing all the transactions on the category entity anyways. If we want to load transactions uh, of a specific category, we'll use uh, a specific query builder to build the query and load the transactions that way. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to comment this out 
and in fact we're doing the same thing on the user entity as well if we open the user entity we have this add transaction method in here if we see where this is used we see that it's used within the set user of the transaction and it's the same reason as we did here we can just comment this part out now let's try the import now and hopefully it works this time and sure enough it does and it actually took less time than before before it was 650 milliseconds now it's 488 let's inspect the logs and we see that the unit of work size has decreased by a lot before the loop it was 62 then we did the import and after the loop it's back to 62 if we compare that to previous import we see that after the loop it was at 1062 in this case it's back to 62 so it should have cleared out some memory the memory usage is also a little bit less than before compared to this but it's still quite a lot so what's happening in here is that most of this memory is actually eligible for garbage collection it simply means that the memory has been cleared by the clear method but it hasn't been garbage collected yet however it's available to be allocated we can prove that by calling a php function called gc collect cycles which is going to force the garbage collection so let's go back to the code let's go back to the transaction import service and after the loop in here we'll call gc collect cycles and let's try the import now so let's click import let's open the logs and as you can see now it looks a lot better than before now if you scale this up to 10,000 transactions 100,000 transactions the memory usage is going to be much better than before this may not look like a big improvement but i'll show it to you now when i'm going to import 10,000 transactions so let's import 10,000 transactions we see that it did take about four seconds to import but as you can see the memory didn't go up by a lot it's almost same as before when we did 1,000 transaction import if we compare it to this it was 111 now it's 113 so it didn't go up by a lot now let me comment out this clear method here and here and let's import 10,000 transactions again and see what the memory usage looks like so let's go back here let's import 10,000 transactions and this is going to take a while the import has finished it took about 14 seconds let's inspect the logs and now we see how big the memory usage difference is it's about four times more memory usage than before and compared to the previous import where we used the clear method we see that the memory usage increase is negligible note that we don't need to call the gc collect cycles method here php will reclaim the memory whenever it needs to on its own i just used it here to show you that the memory was actually available and has been cleared so let's get rid of that all right so hope this video was helpful in the next video we're going to do a little bit of refactoring because since we removed the flush method from the transaction update method adding transaction manually or updating that from the controller will not work so we have to adjust the code there as well we'll do that in the next video so thank you so much for watching please click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so i'll see you in the next one